Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome your athletes onto the competition floor. In lane number one, welcome Will Back-to-back -back events for the men. Events 10 and 11, Ringer In 1 and Ringer 2. Thanks for being with us here, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland, being joined by Chase Ingram here on the Rogue Iron Game. Will Morad taking the floor here, the first of two heats. And Morad's a guy we're going to want to keep an eye on in this heat because he's dealing with a, what appears to be a little bit of a hamstring issue. He, he's grabbing his hamstring yesterday after the sprint event. He even talked to Dave Cash a little bit. Forewent the lift ye uh, yesterday afternoon. And when you're looking at bike, bike's really not going to affect the hamstring too much if anybody's done that. It's the quads that uh, get penalized when you go too fast. But those toes to ring actually demand a lot more hamstring flexibility than people might think because the rings, you can't really move them around like you would a straight bar for toes to bar. Well, Matt McLeod coming off his second event win of this competition. Here are your overall standings as Matt Fraser is going to try and track down Noah Olson over these next two events. He still has possibly one, maybe two events remaining, but he's running out of time. Fraser with a 35-point deficit to make up. Jorgen Carl Gumanson, he sits in third, but he will have to hold off Saxon, pa I'm sorry, Scott Panchik, James Newbery, Matt McLeod. All have a chance to catch him, and even Jacob Hebner certainly might have something to say about the battle for the podium as well. They yeah, absolutely do. Look what Katrin David's daughter just did. We thought she was left for dead in fifth place, and she goes and wins back-to-back -back events and gets 200 more. So we're moving on 10 and 11, 30, 20, 10, Assault Bike Cals and Toes to Rings. The first time we've seen that at the CrossFit Games. In fact, any level of competition in CrossFit history. Moving in, we'll take a short break and move to the 15, 10, 5, burpees to the rings and overhead squats at 135. Sean, I was talking earlier is that this event actually isn't hard to do. You know, event one is hard to do no matter how slow you go. But what that means is these athletes actually have to push the pace faster than they may be prepared to do. Five men in this first of two heats. Matt McLeod, courtesy of that event win, has moved up to sixth place overall as he won earlier today in the only water event that we've seen at the CrossFit Games on a Sunday as he and Tia Toomey made it an Australian sweep. Adrian Moonweiler, meanwhile, sits in ninth place overall with 492 points. He's looking to get himself possibly into the top five. And Jacob Hepner currently seventh overall. Jacob Hepner is one guy I have my eye on that has the skill set to push these two events and set. It's going to actually end up setting the pace for Heat, too. Ten seconds. Stand by. Ringer one, the first heat underway. Six minute time cap and then ringer two, the next challenge begins just a minute after that. And we start with these 30 calories on the salt bike, 120 total repetitions in this event. Now, when you get to the bike, you have to understand is that you must push the pace faster than you are prepared to do, but not so fast that you end up hurting yourself for the second round because 30 takes quite a bit. You don't want to fully invest into the 30. That round of 20 will be your most important round when it comes to the bike. Hang on to the rings, try to recover, have good movement, but focus on the intensity of the bike. Matt McLeod right now through 23, now 24 of those 30 calories. And remember the last time we saw an event that kind of required just pure grunt work done quickly, that was the sprint couplet. He won that event. And imagine the what those legs go through when you're talking about a sled push. I think a lot of those athletes contested that. So he definitely has the fortitude to handle a strong pace on the assault bike. Matt McLeod onto the rings first. 30 repetitions here. Jacob Hepner has joined him. And now here comes Saxon Panchik, Adrian Moonweiler on the right of your screen. And now Will Morad on the left. Remember that hamstring injury? You can see the wrap around his left leg. So here's the big difference between toes to bar and toes to rings. Look at the athlete's torso as they lean back to try to bring their toes to the rings. They do actually doesn't sit back. A bar, a pull-up bar won't move. It's fixed. So you can actually lay back, press down the bar, and it doesn't require as much flexibility into the hamstrings. With the rings, their torsos don't move. So the demand on the core is a little greater, even though it's not as much on the hand. So that pulling up of the chest, staying upright, is what actually makes these rings harder to use. Well, Matt McLeod stays in the lead. He's now halfway done with this event through 60 of the 120 scored repetitions. 
in his first ever appearance here at the CrossFit Games, and he already has two event wins under his belt. One of them came earlier today, and now Jacob Hepner is on to the assault bike as he stays in second. Saxon Panchik now getting to the bike. Upper left-hand part of your screen, he's in third, followed by Adrian Moonweiler close behind him, bottom right-hand corner. The most important round is the middle round. The round of 20 in event 10, the round of 10 on event 11 is that you can't back off the pace. You're going to want to. Your legs have had time to kind of feel the effects of what the first 30 cals did while they were hanging from the rings for 30 repetitions. Jacob Hepner has now moved in front of Matt McLeod through 74 of the 120 scored repetitions. So McLeod falling off the pace a little bit and Jacob Hepner has taken the lead. When you fall off the pace on the assault bike at this level and this level of intensity, you fall off a cliff in terms of pacing with the rest of the field. So Hefner, through 80 of the 120 scored repetitions, he has 20 toes to ring to complete. Here comes Matt McLeod, who now sits in second. There's a good angle of what I was talking about earlier, is that the torso, the shoulders and hips stay almost directly underneath the rings as opposed to a toes to bar off a pull-up rig where you get to sway a little bit more. And that's a challenge of the rings. Well, Jacob Hefner is chasing Matt McLeod in the overall standings. He's 37 points back of him. Adrian Moonweiler on the right of your screen sits in fourth as Jacob Hefner. Final 10 calories on the assault bike. 20 reps remaining for him. Now this is still heat one. There's another heat remaining, so you don't really have a time to pace off this. You're gonna have to push these last 10 to get through them because the faster you push on the salt bike, you get an exponential time advantage. Will Morad is back in fifth place as Saxon Panchik is now onto the bike. So Morad in fifth, but it's Hepner in the lead, almost done with his final bike. He is now 10 reps remain for Jacob Hepner. His best finish was third in Mary. Now here comes Matt McLeod. Hepner one to go. And Jacob Hepner will take heat number one. 427.13 seconds. Matt McLeod looking to take second place in this heat. This is the first of two heats. So McLeod is in. And all of these men have just bought themselves extra rest. The time cap is six minutes. They get a minute reset once the time cap hits. And then they get going on ringer two. So Will Morad. The only man left on the floor. And Morad will get across the finish line. That hamstring must really be bothering him. I mean, you think about how he did it, and that's doing a dead race sprint. And it's different than, you know, a little twinge. We don't know the extent of the injury that he has, but you talk about hamstrings and, you know, fully functional movement at the most high intensity possible. That's not an easy thing to deal with. Hepner on the right side, finishing first. Now what I'm thinking about is actually heat number two. Because if you're in heat number two, we said earlier, the advantage is knowing the time to be. What better athlete to have in heat one to really show what the pace needs to be? Because a lot of times, you won heat one, maybe it actually wasn't that good of a time based off the athlete that was doing it. Hepner, however, is could have one of the best times we see today. And as of right now, he's picked up at least 10 points on Matt McLeod. Hefner's in seventh, McLeod is in sixth. Other athletes, though, in the next heat might be able to help increase that amount. We're getting set for the start of ringer two, the bottom half of the graphic here, and now the reps have been, reps have been cut in half. It hadn't got any easier, though, because we have burpees to rings and then overhead squats at 135, a very very light weight for these athletes. It's actually almost insignificant in terms of weight, but it is significant in terms of it's enough weight with enough reps after what they just did on the assault bike. That's actually gonna make it very challenging to do because of the pace they're gonna have to be going at. Jacob Hepner with the top time in heat number one and trying to set the top time here in the first heat of now event 11, Ten seconds. ringer two. Stand by. 
We are underway 15, 10, 5. Burpees to the rings and overhead squats at 135 pounds. We saw Captain Davis, David Zotter in the last event just go for it. And that's what you actually can do. You can't really screw up the pace of this event. It's just burpees, it's just overhead squats. The thing to remember, we just did 60 toes to rings and 60 assault bike cows. Those overhead squats, though I said were light, the core demand on an overhead squat is way more than people think. And then your legs are blown out. So those squats are not going to be as easy as they may have thought they would be coming into this. And Jacob Hefner is just ahead of Adrian Muweiler. Adrian Muweiler is on the right of your screen. Hefner is right next to him. Now, Will Morad, once again, uh, dealing with that hamstring injury. We'll see how that affects him here on these burpees. But he is in fourth place ahead of Matt McLeod. And now it's Hefner. Moonweiler and now Saxon Panzik, who are done with their set of 15 burpees, and now it's onto the overhead squat. So Hefner choosing to clean and jerk that. Moonweiler goes right into it. We saw those two different strategies between Catra and Sarah, and it's really more of what you're comfortable with because what you need, what you have to have, is a good overhead position. Some people will prefer to actually snatch that to snap them into a good position. Others, without that confidence, need to rack it to the front and then push press it overhead. Adrian Moonweiler about a rep ahead of Jacob Hepner. Moonweiler's on the right, Hepner is on the left. Now Hepner finishes before Moonweiler, and now they are halfway done. We go to 10 burpees to rings. Hepner's in the lead, followed by Adrian Moonweiler. And here's where you have to go. You're in probably the most pain you're going to be in in the event. It's not going to get any worse, but you have to push the pace on a set of 10. You can't, no one's going to really lose this in a set of five unless they drop the, the barbell. Hefner through 35 of the 60 repetitions. Adrian Moonweiler is falling off the pace just a little bit, and Saxon Panchik sits in third. Matt McLeod, this is good news for Hefner. He's back in fourth. And Will Morad sits in fifth. Man, look at Will Morad on the left side, just gutting it out. I tell you what, just to stick through that the whole time and to keep fighting through the event, it's a lot of guts for Will Morad. Morad is on the left, and you can see he is favoring his right leg, trying to take as much pressure off as possible of his left. Meanwhile, Jacob Hefner is on for his second of three sets of overhead squats, and here comes Adrian Moonweiler. Ten repetitions here. for Jacob Hefner. And Morad just has nothing left in the tank. Is that hamstring, you gotta give him credit for being out there and gutting through this, but doesn't look like he's gonna be much of a factor in the rest of the competition. Meanwhile, Jacob Hefner, for his final five burpees to rings and then five more overhead squats, he's starting to open up some distance between himself and Adrian Moonbiler, who just joined him on the rings. Here comes Saxon Panchik, Matt McLeod, is towards the right of your screen in that pink top. And Hepner is leaving him in his dust. This is good for Jacob Hepner as he looks to move up the leaderboard. One more for Hepner, and Jacob Hepner sweeps the first heats. 329.73 seconds. Adrian Moonweiler will come in behind him. He will finish second in the heat. Saxon Panzik will take third. Now Matt McLeod, who was challenging for the lead in the last heat, has slowed considerably here in ring or two. And, and you look at his movement, it, it's not due that it, overhead squats are bad for him, and it's not that burpees to rings are hard, but it's just overall compounding effect what event 10 did going into event number 11. So less than a minute for Matt McLeod, who's done. So 10 reps remain for him. And Will Moore had his rep counter has not moved. I don't know if he's decided just to stop. I mean, there comes a certain point where it's competitive fire versus actual injury right. and making something worse. Jacob Hepner having fun with the crowd while he waits. And now Matt McLeod with 14 seconds to go. He's got to hurry. He's got five reps. And McLeod with a trip, 
but he is going to squeak in inside that five-minute time cap. But Jacob Hefner will own both times to beat with one heat remaining here in these back-to-back -back events. When it's hit it coming in, that's good for Hapner. I thought he was well suited for two back events just like this. But this is great for the second heat coming up because they have a pretty much dead on idea of what it's going to take to win this event and what those times are going to look like. That is a major advantage with sprint events like this going into the second heat. Jacob Hefner having some fun with the camera as he had some fun in both of these events. Time to beat in both Ringer 1 and Ringer 2, 329.73, the top time in Ringer number 2, the second half of these back-to-back -back events, as we are now set for the final heat. And this is going to be a lot of fun as Matt Fraser looks to track down Noah Olson. When you, uh, when you came into today, and Fraser being 15 points out, we saw that based off what the TBD schedule had been, is that there's 300 points up for grab for all these athletes to make moves the best they can. Right? And the question was, how is Noah going to handle that pressure going to a swim event? I say there's some confidence there. He's Absolutely. A, he's a capable swimmer and paddleboarding. He's done at the games before. So has Matt, mm -hmm. both of them at the same time. Matt didn't have a finish that I know he would want to have earlier this morning. Fell back further on the point scale. And we thought two events were left to go. Matt has been given a gift in the points race with a double event here in the middle of the day with events 10 and 11, just like Katrin David's daughter did. So this is huge for Matt to take advantage of this opportunity that has been given. Yeah, Matt Fraser now has 35 points to make up, but I mean, we saw Katrin David's daughter erase a huge deficit and get herself on the podium. Uh, Noah Olson, though, let's give him his due. He has been handling the pressure extremely well here, and. I don't want to jinx him, but he has yet to make that big costly mistake that has kept him from you know, reaching the potential that we think he is capable of doing. And this is the event that poses the biggest threat to have that happen right. for Noah, right? You have a salt bike, which if you start too fast in the round of 30, you're done. There's no coming back from redlining on the assault bike. Oh, by the way, you have another event that you can lose even more points on. We saw it happen to Matt McLeod. Noah has shown me so far, and like I said, I don't want to talk about a no-hitter in the ninth inning, <laughs> that he has changed and grown as an athlete, not just physically, mentally, but competitively, because there's a difference. There's the mental game, there's a physical game, and then there's your competitive game. Matt Fraser has that. Rich Froning had that, and to a level that you really can't teach. Matt, on the other side, talking about you know Noah not making a mistake, Matt's Matt's ready. Matt's angry. You know, and, and an angry Matt Fraser is a dangerous Matt Fraser, but I don't want him to lose that competitive intelligence because the same thing can happen. We saw it happen to him in 2015 in the final event when he tried to chase down Ben Smith on the assault bike. He ended up burying himself. In retrospect, he actually didn't need to go that hard. So sometimes athletes' biggest strengths can be their biggest weakness is that Matt needs to be careful to not overdo it too soon and maybe lose even more. Yeah. Because Matt, Matt can't lose more than 20. Matt, Matt can't lose points to Noah Olsen in these two events. He has to he has to beat Noah. I don't know about winning, mm -hmm. but he has to. Right. He has to start finishing ahead yeah. of him. And then the best case scenario for, for Fraser, he finishes ahead of Olsen and he gets some somebody between the two of them. Uh, there's also a good battle going on now for the rest of the podium. Bjorn and Carl Gumitsen currently sits in third place overall. Scott Panchik will be gunning for him now as uh, Panchik sits about 43 points back. Which in two back-to-back -back events, when you're talking about 200 points up for grabs, with 10 points between places, the margin of point spread that we are working with 10 athletes makes all of this like, it's not, I wonder if. Mm -hmm. It's like, it can happen. It's been happening all weekend. It's been happening all day on both the men and the women's side. Is that having this available for two back-to-back -back events, 40 points is now nothing. It used to be, I don't think he can reach them. You know, he's going to have to get like 10th place for his first. That, that used to be a 40-point difference. Now it's first and fourth. Yeah, James Newbury comes in in fifth place overall. He is 17 points back at Scott Panchik. 
for fourth. So now Pajic has to look over his shoulder yeah. and try to hold off James Newberry. So back to the CrossFit World Feed that they have been providing for the last four days. As the athletes in the second and final heat here of events 10 and 11 take the floor, and there is James Newberry. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram, and we really appreciate you being with us here today at the Rogue Iron Game as we wrap up our coverage of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. Final day of competition started way back on Thursday <laughs> with nearly 300 total individual athletes. We're now down to just 20. Matt Fraser, the last time he was in this facility, he won both the events in pretty dramatic fashion. I mean, that's, that's the Matt Fraser we're used to seeing, but now you add the fuel of being in second again behind Noah Olson. The deal here is like, if Noah can keep his composure, that's really his only biggest issue coming in. It's not any of these movements. Overhead squats, he's fantastic, strong on the bike. Matt's going to need to take it. He can't wait for Noah to make a mistake. And that's going to be the big thing. I, 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 I'm so excited to watch the team go. <laughs> I'm trying to contain my energy right now. But this type of event, these two sport events, how fast they're going to be with so much on the line, it's going to be fireworks. And we're not into the final event yet. Uh, just 35 points separating Noah Olsen from Matt Fraser and it's Bjorn and Carl Gubinson, who's going to try to hold off Scott Panchik for that third and final spot on the podium. Back-to-back -back challenges, 120 reps in the first, 60 reps in the second. And that's just, it's, you see the rings, but it's the bike. The bike is this event. I was talking to what? Paul Tremblay once the uh, events got announced, and tell me how this was. Like, it's straight bike, especially you got the big, strong guys out there. It favors them. The rings, you just got to be able to hang on and keep that rhythm on the rings. But it's going to come down to the bike, but not so much. Mm -hmm. As an athlete coming in, you know what's on the line and you have to move fast, but wait for the 20 to push the pace. Noah Olsen and Matt Fraser will be right next to each other. And keep an eye on Matt Fraser because he will be watching Noah Olsen's display. He does that all the time in events like this. Olsen. Trying to get on the podium for the first time in his career. And remember, in 2017, it was an event with heavy overhead squats. He seconds. imploded on that 2-2-2-3 two, 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 intervals event, and that's what kept him off the podium that year. Stand by. Second and final heat of Ringer 1 is underway. 30 calories on the assault bike. And look at James Newberry and Bjorven Carl Gubitsch and crank away. All right, so forget what I said about fully setting the first 30 cows. I can't <laughs> wait to set, see what the next 20 look like. The time to be belongs to Jacob Hefner, 427.13. It's Olsen and Newberry swapping the lead. Fraser's in there as well. So all these men about on the same pace. Noah and Matt do not need to look to the right. Don't let Newberry throw you off your game plan going into the rings. James Newberry is done. 34 seconds. 30 calories down for Newbury. It looks like Fraser is just about done. Uh, Fraser is off and he is ahead of Noah Olsen and there are two other men there as well. Newbury is your leader. He's through 36 now, 37 of the 120 scored repetitions. Jorvan Gumitson and Matt Fraser are in second and third. And here comes Olsen who is in fourth, followed by Scott Panchik. So Olsen's about 15 to 17 seconds behind Matt Fraser currently. And it doesn't matter where it's first or second, sixth or seventh. If there's only two places between the two, it's still 10 points regardless. At 60 reps, Newberry will move on to round two. He'll be halfway through this event. He's through 52, now 53 of the first 60 reps in this first round. Gumanson and Fraser now has moved back in the third. So Olsen and Fraser about even. Here's what you need to look for for James Newberry on the left side of your screen is the pace he has getting onto the bike relative to his first set of 30. So James Newberry back to the bike, 20 calories. He's halfway through this event, 120 total repetitions. Just strong start for Newberry. And here comes Fraser, moves into second. Gumitson now in third. So Noah Olson 
has some ground to make up here in this event. He's off the rings and onto the bike. Now look at Matt Fraser at the bottom right side of your screen. This is a stronger pace than what he started with in the first set of 30, and that's what you need to see. Fraser pushing the middle round to get him back into contention for first place. Meanwhile, James Newberry continuing to lead here. And he is almost done with his second assault by 20 calories down for the man from Australia. He's moving on to the rings. 20 reps. James Newbury stays in the lead. And now Fraser moves into second place. Time to beat 427.13 seconds. Newberry threw 84 of the 120 total repetitions. It's Fraser in second and Gumitson in third, and Noah Olsen is falling off the pace. Noah Olsen needs to push the pace here. He can't really make up time on the rings. That's the problem when you reach the end of this event, is that there's not enough time on the rings to make it up. It has to be done on the bike. Even though Noah Olsen has just Jorvan Carl Gumitson between himself and Fraser, we have other times in the prior heat that might affect things here in this second heat. Newberry almost done. Final round for him, just 10 calories on the bike and then 10 toes to rings. Fraser is in second. Watch the pace on Newberry on the left. He's got enough energy to push, but here comes Matt Fraser. Gumitson is in third. Fraser slowly creeping up on James Newberry. Four calories behind Noah Olsen to the bike. He's in fourth place in this heat. Newberry's done, Fraser's done. 10 reps to go. Newbury about a rep ahead of Fraser. Gumanson on the rings now as well. Five to go for Fraser. Newbury's off, he's gonna win the event. Matt Fraser is off, he takes second. That'll be 90 points for Fraser. Now here comes Gumanson. Gumanson will take third in the event. Noah Olsen will get in. He is in fourth. So Matt Fraser in second place picks up 90. Olsen picks up 70. So Matt Fraser cuts 20 points off of Noah Olsen's lead. That wasn't the best structured event for Noah Olsen, and to only lose 20 is actually a good thing for him. Scott Panchik is done, and Panchik will come across. Panchik fifth in the heat. That time will be good for sixth in the event. So Jacob Hepner, who set the early time to beat, will now take fifth place in that event. So one more look at the final set of toes of rings here is James Newbury hanging on for the win. And he and he went for it. And that's what you got to do in the place on the leaderboard. It really, there's there's nothing to lose for Newbury. And those are the athletes that are the ones that can have a, the most impact on what happens on the podium. And as a result, James Newbury has moved into fourth place ahead of Scott Panchik, and he's only 40 points back of Jorvan Carl Gumanson, who this is all unofficial, now looks like he sits in third place still. Matt Fraser, 15 points back as a result of his second place finish. So Noah Olsen is still the leader, but now only by 15 points as we get set for ringer two. So Fraser's gonna have to beat him with at least two people in between to get that 20 point spread. And then you're looking at Newberry and Bjorkman Carl Goodmanson, 40 point edge that Goodmanson has with Newberry currently sitting in fourth outside the podium. That's just a difference between first and sixth or a third and a ninth. So it's completely possible when you have an event as fast as this, something sub three minutes. One minute. There's no room for error, there's no room for slip up. But I think in this event in particular, with the burpees to the rings and the overhead squats, is that you can really push the pace hard in that first set of 15 and be able to hang on towards the end. And you saw those updated overall standings. So Noah Olson now just 15 points up on that man. So Matt Fraser trying to chip away at Noah Olson's lead here. And it's James Newbury who Matt moves Fraser into fourth place overall. And he has never been lower than seconds. seventh overall in this competition. Olsen versus Fraser, and as you heard Chase say, if Matt wants to take the white jersey from Noah Olsen, he's got to beat him and he's got to get a little bit of help. Ten seconds. Stand by. 
Can Noah Olsen hold off Matt Fraser? Second and final heat of event 11, ringer two, 60 total reps. Look we start at the with pace 15 burpees of the rings. By Matt Fraser in the green, center lane, just to the right of Noah Olsen. We saw David's daughter do the same thing and just come out of the gates screaming. There is no pacing in the first set of 15 because I don't think there are enough reps when you go to 10 and 5 to make up for lost time. Noah Olsen and Matt Fraser are about even. Now Gumanson is on the lead pace as well. So 15 reps here, then 15 overhead squats at 135. And who needs to be careful is actually top left of your screen is James Newberry as he is paying for that event number 10 pace. Newberry's in fifth. Matt Fraser leads, first man to the barbell. Time to beat is 329.73 seconds belongs to Jacob Hepner. Gumanson on the barbell and Olsen getting to work as is Scott Panchik. But if this holds right here, regardless of where they finish, Matt Fraser is going to be your new overall leader. Fraser with three to go before he will move on to round number two. Now 10 burpees of the rings for Matt Fraser, who is tracking down. He missed the rings. That rep will not count. And we talked about it earlier. Height is an advantage here. It is when you take a fixed height of the rings, and that is a significant jump after you just went through 15 overhead squats and the 60 cals on the bike. Matt Fraser through 35 now of the 60 scored reps. Jorvan Gubitsen sits in second. Noah Olsen is in third. Again, if this holds in this event, regardless of where these men finish, Matt Fraser is going to take the white jersey from Noah Olsen. Fraser moving. Now 10 reps at 135. Gumanson still right behind him, and now Scott Panchik is starting to move ahead of Noah Olsen, and James Newberry paying for that effort in the first event. He's in fifth. Noah Olsen is laboring back on the right side of the screen on those burpees. The Olsen's pace has slowed considerably. Matt Fraser has not, and Matt Fraser is zeroing in on the top of the overall leaderboard. Five burpees to rings for Fraser before a final five reps on the barbell. Gumanson is on the rings. This is great for Fraser. Five reps to go for Matt Fraser. Time to beat 329.73 seconds. Final rep for Fraser. Give me my jersey. He is your new overall leader as he wins event 11. Gumanson is in. Here comes Scott Panchik. So now Noah Olsen's got to worry about falling out of the top three. Now he's across the finish line, so Olsen will finish fifth in the event. Fraser gets 100 points, Olsen will get 60. So now it's Fraser, unofficially with a 35 point lead on Olsen, as James Newberry, who went full send in event number one, is now sitting in fifth. And that's exactly what I mean by people who can screw up the leaderboard. He fully sent in an event 10 with no regard of what his finishing place would be on event 11. And that put points between Matt and Noah just because of what he did. Noah Olsen has put up a great fight here at the CrossFit Games. But Matt Fraser has been on a mission. He has now won three of the last four events inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center. And in the last event, he finished second. We are approaching the five minute time cap and James Newbury, who won the first event, is possibly gonna get in inside the time cap. And when you see an elite athlete moving like that, you know that was difficult. And I know I'll never try these events. <laughs> at least not at that <laughs> intensity. And Matt Fraser takes event 11.
he picks up a possible, or he picks up 190 out of a possible 200 points in these back-to-back -back events. And right now, there's a new white jersey being printed with his name on it. And I'll give credit to Noah, this looked like nothing that he did wrong in terms of game planning and strategy that gave him these finishing positions. He just, you know, now it's just better. As a result, Matt Fraser with yet another event win and had the exact perfect pace here in Ringer 2. And, and Fraser with a 25 point lead over Noah Olsen. It's Jorben Gubinson in third. But for the first time since Friday, Matt Fraser is going to be wearing the overall leader's jersey. And we really want to thank all the volunteers here at the CrossFit Games as Matt Fraser set for an interview. That was exactly what you needed to retake the overall leader position after those two events. You came out here looking hungry for it. How did you execute a plan in those two back-to-back -back events to get back here? I wanted to go out of the pace that scared myself and just uh, not give myself a choice but to hang on. You know, uh, I got nothing to hold back, so I'm just, I'm just going for it. We're sitting down. He's a little beat up after that, I'm sure, and after getting in the water this morning. I mean, how are you feeling over the course of all these past events? Oh, you know, tired, sore, just like everyone else, but fine, it's not stopping me from doing anything. I'm ready to do it all again. Let's Good go. luck. Thank you. Matt Fraser says he's ready to do it all over again. And he, just like Tia Toomey, trying to track down some history as Matt Fraser is looking to become just the second man to ever win four CrossFit Games championships. We will step aside for a little bit. We're going to be back here inside the Rogue 10 on the Rogue Iron Game. And Annie Thor's daughter will be joining us. So you're going to want to stick around for that as our coverage of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games continues. Back out to the competition floor at the Alliant Energy Center as Dave Castro is getting set to make another announcement as he has brought the 20 individual athletes back out onto the competition floor. Let's hand it over to the CrossFit World Feed. The final event of the 2009 games for the individuals is what we call the standard. The standard is Grace, 30 clean and jerks for time with 135, 95 pounds, 30 muscle ups for time, and then Isabel, 30 snatches for time. The standard is your final event. Go warm up. Go get ready, go do what you need to do. For the teams, you guys are doing a team variant of that. Two athletes, one male and one female, will finish grace, then the next two athletes finish grace. 
Then you guys as a team move up to 30 muscle ups. Two athletes finish 30 muscle ups for time, and then the next two finish. And then you guys progress to the barbell. Two athletes finish Isabel. Two athletes finish Isabel. Cross the line, time. Let's have some fun. <laughs> There you have it, the final events announced. These athletes gonna go prepare for it. The team's kicking things off at 3 p.m. The standard for the teams and the individuals. We will take a break when we come back. Annie Thorstadter joining us here on the Rogue Iron Game Show at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games.